Oh, Holy that was... fuck, that was nice. Not full screen. The opposite of full screen. Minimize. Not minimize. I'll tell you one thing though, I'm definitely looking forward to Wings Over Wanaka next week because um, they have one hell of a lineup. I mean, we're talking a brand new uh, Mosquito is going to be flying. Uh, it'll be the second second time I've ever seen that. Um, so that'll be like a Mosquito, two Merlin engines, full bore at 100 feet above you. Jesus Christ, that's amazing. <laughs> I bet. That gets your wanker moving. Oh, boy, it <laughs> does it. I mean, like, um, you know, Don, like I've seen footage of air shows in Auckland to Don, and, you know, he, he was saying they can't even uh, fly that close over there in Canada and stuff just because of insurance and stuff like that. Meanwhile, we're like, yeah, I could almost touch that aircraft as it goes by, you know? It's like, hey, how do the pilots really do it? Do that, except don't shoot. <laughs> so there, so there's that we've got a p51d which has its original engine that is oh for fuck's sake please record that yeah so like every all the p51s at the moment like worldwide i think have like reproduction engines or modern ones or you know something like that yeah whereas uh because we're going to have two down there the standard one and then this new one yeah, it's the only one where the engine isn't exact is original. So it was it was kind of like one of the ones that was just stored after the war. You know, it never really made it. So mm -hmm. those ones, when you find them, are usually in really good condition. So yeah, so it's going to be the original. Uh, it's got an original engine. We've got two F-16s from the U.S. Uh, Air Force. They're flying down from Japan to come to the show with a C-17. Um, is it Globemaster? Not sure, but just imagine, like, I think so. you're a pilot, and you're like, hey, you got a TYD you're going to fucking Australia or New Zealand for a fucking air show. Pff, okay. <laughs> Shit. That'll be the easiest <laughs> fucking weekend ever. <laughs> oh, dude, fuck. <laughs> yeah, so so they're doing a, I think they're doing a nonstop trip from Japan all the way to New Zealand, so the C-17 is actually going to be their tanker. For the whole oh, time. Oh, that's that's fucking tits. I was just so, saying, it's like knowing the U.S. Air Force is probably like, all right, you go there, you buzz the field once, and you turn around and come immediately back. <laughs> well, yeah, that, like that I'm, I'm hope. <laughs> I mean, they're going to be staying in, uh, I think it's Ofanaki, um Air Base close by because uh, the C-17 won't be able to land at Wanaka because it's too small. Um, <laughs> the the F-16s. I hope I do hope they land and you know so you can get up close because you know like my dad and I were talking about it and he's he's like well you know they are military you know military there's probably you know they probably don't want the public to get too close and it's like but they're F-16s they're the most widely exported bloody uh fighter jet in the world I don't think there's many secrets on them <laughs> right <laughs> you know especially because they're not are they still a frontline fighter for the US or are yes. they kind of like more reserve no, there's, there's, I know in, uh, I say I know, uh, so they might actually be secondaries. That's, I thought I they were more resigned to guard units anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the Marine Corps, uh, we had them out at, uh, Yuma Air Base. Oh, well. well, you know, well, the Marines do just get whatever people don't want, so, I mean. <laughs> but everyone wants an F-16, it's a classic. You know, it's weird. I was thinking about it. The F-16, you sit there going, how old is the F-16? You think, oh, maybe, you know, 10, 20 years. 20 50. years old? <laughs> it's like 50. It's like, oh. Yeah, it's Jesus. like you imagine what a fucking 50-year-old aircraft looks like. And you're like, oh, like, a, you know, you know, P-51. And now it's the F-16. It's like, yeah. holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like the Hercules, you know. It's like, that was, you know, Vietnam era. In fact, I, got, I, I heard a story uh, when I was doing the 48-hour live stream that our C-130s, we've just got our latest one, the J, which isn't even the latest one. It's just the latest one for New Zealand. Um, we have one that um, a Vietnam veteran who flew on it 
reunited with it, right? Oh, nice. That C-130 is still in active service. It is still one of our active aircraft. Holy shit. <laughs> Since I mean, Vietnam, we're a veteran reunited with it, and it was still in active service. <laughs> and if it ain't if... broke, don't fix it, I guess. Fuck. Oh, no, they, they do they do break, though. Every time we send one somewhere, we have to send two of them just in case because they usually break down. Um, you fuck. can tell when the, the old one versus the Jays are flying because the old ones have four trails of smoke coming out the back or, <laughs> you know, exhaust or whatever. We call them the old Smokies, but yeah. So the brand new C-130 is going to be down there. The the Poseidon is going to be there as well. They're going to show be showing that off. Uh, those are those are cool. Uh, Avenger's going to be flying. Uh, Corsair going to uh, be flying overhead. I'll send you plenty of photos and videos. Don't worry. Video, please. <laughs> Shall I just upload it directly to Pornhub for you? Yeah, that'd be <laughs> fine. <laughs> New Zealand skies get fucked by blue guy. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> but yeah, so and then there's a whole bunch of World War One aircraft and. All sorts of nice. cool stuff, so that's why we aren't going to be recording next week, because I'm going to be walking around with a raging heart on. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> without further ado, welcome to the Micro Machines podcast. Uh, you could probably tell by the first slide here, this is a celebration episode. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about, but this is our two-year anniversary. Woo -woo. Happy Believe birthday, boys. Happy birthday. I didn't think it was that long, actually. It doesn't feel like it, does it? It it really doesn't. It, it only feels like a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it would it would have thought would make it this this far, eh? Ah, uh, well, considering we're one of the smaller podcast communities, I'm actually kind of surprised too. I think the Discord. Has helped a lot in that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, we are we do have a small, small community, but <laughs> cool. They are loyal as fuck. I'll give them that. Yes, we have we are a very polarizing podcast. I find but it's either people hate us or they really love us. No real in between. I, I want to get like a group of haters and just like ask them why. Mm, I think we know that 60s. answer. I mean, you you did see the, that read that newest comment from the <laughs> yeah. uh, the flower class. <laughs> it was I had a good laugh with that. Uh, you saw that one, Clint, eh? Uh, yeah, that was a couple weeks ago, but I can't remember exactly what it said. <laughs> he said, uh, "Good episode would have been better if it was just Callum and not the color color commentaries from the others." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was funny. I love that one. <laughs> But that's, that's like that's what makes it funny. I know. It's like that's the point. It also saves me from like you know if you just listen to me drone on for an hour, that'll get a little bit boring. Get with the times, old man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is our two year anniversary. So we're just gonna be going. We've got a few things to talk about because it's been a while since uh, we recorded. Because uh, last week, of course, we had some major technical issues with Zencaster. That was, that was horrible. We got yeah. uh, so we. Had, couldn't release that at all. Um, and then the week before that, of course, I had the 48-hour live streams and the charity event. So I'll be going through that uh, in this podcast, this episode. So we're just, we're just been very, very busy just with uh, modeling stuff, personal and personal stuff as well. I know we've all gone through a few things lately. so But it's good to be back doing the uh, two-year two anniversary. So uh, first slide here. Just a little recap on the last two years of the podcast. So we have done uh, 62 episodes, I believe. 61, no, 62. This is the 62nd episode. Nice, nice. It's still, I still, I still think we should be on like episode 20 or something like that. Hey, like, Callum. Yo. Are we going to do introductions? Ah, no, nah, they fucking know who we are. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, I, I just want to say I'm drinking a coffee. Okay, I've got I'm a Canadian a club and dry. Box. And uh, I I mix it up this weekend. I got a wild cherry Pepsi. Oh my oh, god! Yeah, yeah. Not a, not a classic. No. What not a what classic. is a what is a front of Malevolent Creek done to you? 
it's I've seen things, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. You wouldn't know. Pretty. He wasn't there. <laughs> All right, here we'll do. You need to talk, brother. So, a quick introduction. You got me, Callum, from New Zealand with the Canadian Club. You've got Garrison, the uh, Marine with PTSD who likes to drive around and harass homeless people. And you've got oh. Clint. You got Clint from Indiana who likes to pretend he's a Viking. Um, oh, there's no pretend. You should see him on my level in Creek. Okay, <laughs> fucking savage. <laughs> Uh, if you guys want to introduce yourselves, go ahead. No, no. Go ahead, You're Clint. fine. You're fine. Well, well, I mean, it sounds like it means so much to you. I mean, you know, I just... <laughs> I, I, no, just I, I just want to say, I just want to say, I'm making an electrical panel box out of foam and wire. Cool. Very nice. Yes. I have autism. <laughs> no, I just wanted to add some of that color commentary that some people don't like. Go for it. <laughs> but, but go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm I'm done now. Oh, was that it? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that was, right. that was it. Oh, all right. Um, cool. Right. Noted. <laughs> 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 yeah. So we're done. So this is our sixty second episode. Um, in that time, we have done. We have completed six group builds. Of course, the uh, the very very start. I mean, technically. <laughs> Technically, the very first group build wasn't even a podcast, but it was still under Micro Machines. That, that's what we called it. So it's kind of under the uh, Micro Machines uh, universe. So the very first one was the 1 to 100. Uh, that kind of brought us all together. After that was the artillery. Then the Battle of the Bulge, Cold War, Normandy, and the recent one, North Africa. And of course, we've got uh, two others going on at the moment, the uh, Pacific War uh, group build and the Sci-Fi group build. So that'll be uh, eight uh, completed very soon. Uh, stats for A couple of stats for YouTube, Spotify, and Patreon. Uh, YouTube, we currently have 209 subscribers. Whoop, whoop. And a combined total of about 9,200 views, which is pretty cool. Uh on Spotify and RSS, uh, still trying to figure out how those work. They're just mm, difficult to figure to find out information. But as far as I can tell, we've had uh, 4,572 downloads on Spotify, and we have 22 followers on Spotify as well. Uh, Patreon, we have three paying Patreon members and one follower, which I never even expected to get one Patreon, to be honest. So. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was kind of a stretch there. <laughs> <laughs> like when you know when when we did get that news, it was like, oh, Paul Gallagher, our f- very first Patreon has become a Patreon. I just went, are you sure you want to? No, like, there ain't no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, was this a mistake? Did you accidentally do this? But um, I've spoken to Paul quite a bit. Actually, he's a really cool guy. We we. We're going to get him on the podcast at some point because he makes some really cool stuff. He's real. He is so out of the box with his out of the box thinking with his builds. It's um, he does some cool refreshing. stuff. Refreshing. Right? Oh yeah, it's refreshing. Very like, very. Like that forced perspective, like two D um, shipping ship one he did. Have you did you see that one he did for his dad yep. or something? That yeah. is yep. cool. Who's taking it for the Republic? <laughs> yeah, it's it's my phone. And over that, over the two years, we've had five guests, but we're looking to increase that quite a bit. So uh, we've had John from Totally Tank Podcast. That was um, that one was a bit of a disaster, to be honest. <laughs> a little um, bit, <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, yeah, embarrassing, yeah, but we've got to we got to learn somehow, I guess. Yeah. Um, of course, then we had John from Panzer Podcast. We need to we need to check in on him, see how he's going. Is he like yeah. he was doing the, last time we spoke? He was doing the Sherman timeline, wasn't he? Yeah, that was a while back. Yeah, we got to check back in on him. Yeah, we'll yeah. send him a message. Uh, then we got Nick, the Scale Armorer, very cool guy who I'm going to be meeting up this year in Canberra at Scale ACT. Can't wait Hell for yeah. that. Yeah, uh, Martin Drayton, MD Scale Models. Uh, that was probably. The oh, best interview really we've one. done. That was really cool. That was, yeah, that was a very, very good episode. He's a really cool guy. Yes. And, of course, the latest one we had, Ian Kiziers from On The Bench Podcast, also a very cool guy, and I spent quite a bit of time chatting with him uh, 
the 48 hour live stream for model officers but we'll get into that in a little bit oh we also had uh, our sponsor on there too and of course we had our sponsor uh jeff hearn from scale color and se3d uh talking all about that kind of stuff uh so that was really good uh so for the first time we've got some listener mail feedback or dm and this is from nick the scale armorer to the mmp crew happy second anniversary to the podcast it's been a great two years of episodes here's to many more that was uh that was a really nice message from nick that was uh very much appreciated nick's uh probably one of our biggest fans as well oh yeah (laughs) he he yeah he really loves our uh loves the podcast weirdo um (laughs) love you nick yeah we love nick i I actually chat to him like every day so he's he's really cool um if you want to send us any uh feedback mail dms uh criticisms critiques uh if you just want to tell us to shut up and fuck off uh you can do that in about three ways so you have the email address uh, micro.machines.crew at gmail.com um we have uh you can contact contact us on facebook you can write something uh at the micro machines podcast you'll find us there you can even find us personally you know uh or if you want to reach us all uh at discord we uh under the name micro machines with an exclamation mark at the end of it uh but if you can't find us uh flick us a message on um facebook or email and we can send the link i think i'll also i'll put the link in the face the facebook group as well just for people just uh just a warning if you're wanting to tell us to like shut up and fuck off that's totally cool i would not recommend doing it on the server because you'll have over 100 people coming at you so i mean if you want to it'll be hilarious um oh yeah it'd be really yeah. fun give us some entertainment but you know just fair warning <laughs> <laughs> but also you know all negative stuff you know as you can see from the last comment we got on one of our episodes we find <laughs> very funny to be honest like oh, if, yes. if, we, if we do something that makes people take the time out of their day to write something about it i am happy <laughs> <laughs> agreed yes but yeah if you want to send us anything you know just a bit of mail and all that those three are usually your best bet uh you can also find all our um instagrams you can find all our instagrams and stuff like that on the show notes as well if you want to contact us personally right so a little breakdown for the last two years of course we all have our favorite episodes that we've uh, done so far to the two date yes uh for dennis uh of course dennis isn't here at the moment he's still at work um all right my go yep but all he said was he's still in the harness um <laughs> take, take that nice. as you will uh we won't tell you what he does for work uh, <laughs> partly for privacy partly because you can make up your own mind about it and i think that is even funnier you know what if i i think this would be great if you guys want to comment down below what you think dennis does for work based off that statement we we can oh. like throw that in the next episode That'd yes please please do so you so that the uh the line is Dennis couldn't be here. He's still at work. He's still in the harness. Do you want me to read you like verbatim what he said? Yes. 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 <laughs> All right. He said, dog, I ain't even going to lie. I'm stuck in a fucking harness. We decided to lock in pizza break right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that there and let you guys run with it. <laughs> okay. Remind, I need to remind myself. I need to put that in the show notes, in the description just for people to read it please please comment and wherever you can your suggestion of what he does for work we're not going to tell you what he does but please make a make a suggestion and we will read them all out in the next episode it's going to be hilarious oh yeah you know honestly i don't even think he knows what he does anymore (laughs) oh god (laughs) poor guy uh we like to punch down don't we uh, <laughs> so for dennis i kind of took a guess but seeing how he is canadian and he spent two and a half hours talking about this aircraft uh i'm gonna guess his favorite was the avro arrow of course being a uh, true red and white uh canadian uh i think he's like obligated to love the avro arrow so and of course, yes. that episode was actually really, really interesting and left us wondering why the fuck the Avro Arrow was cancelled 
because of the American <laughs> CIA. <laughs> they suck. Yeah, agreed. Uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> Garrison, your favorite episode was the leopard. And why was that? Because the leopard's fucking tits, and I thought it was a fun episode. Nice. It was a good episode, actually. The leopard is a very cool tank. Yeah, it was. Uh, for me, my favorite episode was the models we need. That was the episode uh, going through different vehicles that uh, we think need a, either an updated model, because they're probably from like the 60s, or just don't have a model uh, kit for them at all. So, of course, we went through the list a list of um, all the things we want to see, and there were some very good suggestions, and it was just fun to try and like just think about and you know rem- reminisce and you know just want to believe eventually these kits will come out, but you never know. You never know. But time I will had, tell. Yeah, time will tell. I did enjoy that episode quite a bit. Just talking about it though, mm-hmm. it was a fun episode. Yeah, uh, Clint. Uh, the SDKFZ two five one. I had a lot of fun putting that together. It's, of course, it's my favorite half track <laughs> so got a thing for wheeled armor and half tracks so again it was just really fun to do all the research and put this episode together and it was a very good episode actually as well i i mean i don't know didn't know too much about the 251 and i learned quite a bit from it we literally did that episode i was in the camper and i remember that was clint's first episode of this like that was in the what made. I was yeah. in that camper before I moved into the house. Oh, God, I remember that. Yeah, That's yeah. right. Cause... Yeah, after you got out of the Marines, it's like yeah. you spent, what, like three, four months living in a camper? A uh, uh, month and a half. Yeah. So actually, no, two months. <laughs> two, month, two months. Two months. Yeah, I was going to say, it was quite a while, yeah. Yeah. I remember you having to tell, like, uh, Will and Beth to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I never said that. I did ask him to quiet down, so you know, <laughs> I'm not that Just bad. Very at my forcefully. And <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm sure there's some somewhere in a recording. There's a shut the fuck up. Um, somewhere <laughs> I'm sure there is. Probably. Uh, I mean, duct lying. tape works wonders, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Yeah, it worked out great after that one episode. Redacted <laughs> for legal reasons. That's a joke. I swear to God. <laughs> Why has and... no one seen her, Garrison? It's don't, been don't over worry a about year. That, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it, Clint. Mind your own business. <laughs> <laughs> and for Don, the honorary member, uh, his favorite was the Stug Virch Archer, just because he loves the Archer and hates the Stug, and he likes shitting on the Stug. So that was, uh, he said, that was his favorite episode. Uh, that that was the episode where we had John from Panzer Podcast on, and uh, Don was on, uh, Gray was on as well. So there was about uh, the, the eight of us. Yeah, on that a lot episode. of fucking people. <laughs> <laughs> Two out, nearly three hours long, and I I had it took me six days to edit that episode <laughs> to make it sound like sound like so people could hear what was going on, sort of. But also three hours with eight media tracks. Um, Ooh, I think God. I felt something snap, like snap in my head on that one. <laughs> Just a little <laughs> like <bet> ping. <laughs> uh, but no, these are these are all very good episodes, and I've enjoyed every single one of them. Likewise, very. All right. So I mentioned this before. Uh, But I'll just do a quick little recap on what this is. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I participated in a 48-hour live stream-a-thon type thing, raising money. Um, I was hoping to get uh, Garrison on uh, to join in on the live stream for a bit, except um, what happened to you, Garrison, again? Uh, I got exposed to a level 4 chemical at work, and uh, yeah, it was... Yeah, exactly. Yep, totally. <laughs> you know, one man level up. from lethal. That's yep. Yeah. <laughs> Be a man, eat the chemicals. Yes. Uh, but no, yeah, I got put in the hospital and shit, so that was a fun time. Yes, Gar- Garrison got a face full of pesticides uh, from an idiot being, uh, being not too idiot. careful. Yeah. yeah. So uh, 
I was just sorry. I was on for, my own. For actual legal reasons, I can't talk about that too much right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but so yeah, because we we're talking about oh, getting him on, getting him on, and I just had to say to the guys, oh, uh, don't think he will. He's currently in hospital right now. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, that, that was a fun conversation. Oh, uh, they found it hilarious. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> uh, so the model officers, models for heroes, forty-eight hour group build. So this was a continuous live stream. In total, it's about seventy hours, just because you got you know four t- four teams. Yeah, four teams doing eight-hour live stream. So I was, so I was part of Team Australia New Zealand, although I was the only New Zealander there. <laughs> and we we're, we're streaming for about eight hours at a time, right up to like three, four in the morning. So I didn't get a lot of sleep that weekend, but it's for a good cause. So I don't mind it. Um, so this is for the uh, Models for Heroes, a charity for in Britain uh, for veterans and EMS, emergency services, fire, police, all of that. And it's uh, basically so help supply kits, help supply is a place for them to go um stuff like that because for a lot of these guys you know they don't leave the house much so this is the only time they do leave the house um and it's for when they're struggling and i think garrison can attest to this a counselor or something like that can only do so much because they never really experienced they can't relate to it Hmm. yep so whereas you know this this charity helps them get them into a space with other people who've gone through similar and they can relate to it and it just helps them cope we'll say so i think it's a pretty it was a pretty cool charity event to uh, work with and to help out with so during the time i was building the tamiya 48 scale v1 buzz bomb which i managed to finish with uh one hour to spare and that was after <laughs> seven major incidents with the model itself uh the first one being it was ghost seems like hell mm. yeah especially the one down the center i i like i filled and sanded that like five times <laughs> and even the put the primer down and it still was showing okay. um yeah frustration then it was fully primed and then i lost all the panel lines so i had to rescribe some of them and then eventually just had to strip the primer off which was fun oh, and I then bet. at the very end i had it all done and it was like right i'm just going to do a mac a mac cloak a mac clear coat just to you know bring down the shininess and the, the thing turned white <laughs> oh. yeah that fucking sucks yeah so you know after walking away for a little bit to say some words um came back to it and then just lightly sanded it with a 3000 grit sanding sponge and then uh coated it and then i just brushed water onto it and then did a very diluted thin layer of satin varnish and that brought it back basically so oh good yeah nice save Mm, crisis averted on that one uh there was also auctions so uh companies uh companies could um donate kits modeling supplies stuff like that and all money going towards the auction goes straight to the charity so on team australia uh our we just had four we had the magic factory m2a2 bradley the brand new one that's coming out Ooh. yep we had the airfix uh what's the What's that brand new bloody um, British helicopter they've just brought out? They've been going on about a lot. Um, mm. uh, Westland something. Ugh. I'm not a helicopter guy, so yeah, I me don't neither. Have but yeah, it was I a new, know. it was the new 48 uh, 48 scale um, helicopter airfix have just brought out. Uh, SMS paints, uh, SMS um, you know scale model supply did this big bundle of um, airbrushes and paintbrushes and clips and paint and all this good stuff, you know, big, big supply. And the last one was the brand new Academy uh, PBM5A Mariner in 72nd scale, uh, which I managed to snag from the auctions. Oh. <laughs> nice. The reason, the reason I wanted this kit was A, 
I love the Mariner. B, this is Academy's brand new one, right? Uh, absolutely brand new. And this is a pre-release. And so Metro Hobbies in Australia, where they got this one pre-release kit. It is the only kit outside of the Academy factory. So it's the wow. only one in, a, in the world at the moment that's available to the public. And I managed to snag it. So this is a pre-release. And it's coming with a set of brand new uh, Australian decals as well, which have never been seen before, never been used. So I'll be the very first person to get the kit and the decals together. Um, oh, nice. Dude, with all the old kits you do, you deserve a really nice new kit like that. I know, right? It's going to be weird. It has like canopy masks and parts <laughs> that fit. Recessed panel lines. Oh, great heavens. Wow. I know. It works. I oh, mean, you got it how, all. How good is New Academy? Because I know their old stuff is very questionable. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't really tried brand new Academy, but I mean, I've had. It's got to be better than the old fucking shit from the 70s. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. Yeah, I think I think it is. Um, one of the guy the guys who sent it to me, he said he uh, had a, couldn't help himself. He had a quick look through, and he said it looks really good. So I yeah. I really can't wait for it. So the minute it's currently on its way, the minute it turns up here, I will drop basically everything <laughs> and start building it. Um, you gonna do a YouTube video over it? Oh God, yes. Because oh, uh, since it's a pre-release, this kit with uh, especially with the uh, the special decals. Won't be released for another three or four months, apparently. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Talk about a good view count. Shit. Yep. So it's, and it's a massive aircraft as well. So it's going to be a massive kit. Um, I, I need to find some space. <laughs> you said it's 30 second scale, right? 70 second. Or 70 se Okay. 70 second it's... scale, but it's still... Um, it's still a big aircraft. Oh, yeah. Like the wingspan is about 20 inches, maybe? God damn! In seventy second, yeah, I think dude. So. Uh, maybe yeah, maybe fifteen to twenty inches. Yeah, that it's is big. insane. I mean, it's a it's a big aircraft. Fucking for a two engine aircraft, it's massive. Yeah. So, uh, so I'll be doing the uh, our, the Royal Air Force, the Royal Australian Air Force, um, in the dark green. So instead of being the blue, you'll be dark green. I think. Uh, I just need to check, though. It seems like all the Australian ones were transport only. They were unarmed, um, mm. which seems a shame because the Mariner has eight fifty cows on it. So I think I'll do, a, <laughs> I'll do an armed Australian one. <laughs> so what well, we could have had, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it'd be so, a shame to do, you know, to not do it that way. I know, right? I mean, that's what makes aircraft fun, gun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Not broom um, handles. <laughs> so no, over Tokyo. <laughs> I wonder if they just drop the broom handles as well, just for like, what the hell? <laughs> like but, throw them in there. Uh, so over the seventy hours, though, tallied up, we managed to raise nine thousand pounds, which is uh, eighteen thousand seven hundred in New Zealand, seventeen thousand four hundred in Australian. And eleven thousand five hundred uh, in US, which is um, for a weekend, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, especially yeah, no kidding. Very yeah, good. So, so I've already confirmed that I'll be participating next year, and hopefully, maybe you two can uh, get in on the action. Maybe if uh, if I don't get exposed to chemicals again, I should be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, once I found out that you know it was already too late, I thought it had to be a forty-eight scale kit. Yeah, no, I'm not sure that, like, the theme changes every year, so it's just, are you able to build in 48 hours? I know, it's like, I thought this year was, like, 40, 48 scale and 48, and it's like, well, I really don't have anything that in that scale I could do in a weekend, and I seen someone was doing, like, a 112 tractor, it's like, well, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a bit, like, especially for the Australian, New Zealand side, everything was a bit late and rushed, and a bit disorganized with things so i think so next year next year of things will be way better and uh, we have more time to prepare and stuff like that so yeah good learning points from this year to bring yeah. in next year yeah absolutely but it was a it was a great time a lot of fun i was um so i was hanging out with craig Everson in australia 
uh, John Marley, who we should probably get on the onto the uh, podcast because he's pretty cool. He was uh, he he was in the uh, Royal Australian Air Force, um, as working on Hornet uh, as a mechanic, oh, yeah. I think. and then also was on the F thirty five for a bit. Ooh, and don't let um, Dennis know he'll fucking steal him away. <laughs> yeah, and also uh, Ian Kezia from uh, on the bench podcast. So. Yeah, I was hanging oh, out with those three a lot, as well as James Giffen from Just Make a Conversation, and Steph as well. He was Steph was a cool guy. He was cool. I like him. A bit zany, but yeah. But that is. I'm glad you had a good time, man. Mm. Oh yeah, it was like definitely try and get you guys on next year. Next year, absolutely. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But that was uh, the 48 hour recap. Beautiful. Uh, so we'll let I'll shut up for a bit and let uh, Garrison take over on this one because this is we're just going to do the uh, competition submission and winner for the North Africa group build. Um, usually we do the recreation as well, but because of just time constraints, we're just going to do the competition stuff for now. So take it away. All right. So the first one we've got here is uh, Martin's Tamia's. Uh, words venerable <laughs> all right that word venerable. sas jeep with figures by soga miniatures photo etch upgrade set by venerland and extra stowage from value gear decals so uh value gear details on decals fucking idiot <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh my eyes are crossed sorry um uh, yeah no looks fucking sweet i uh we've already gone over this uh, last week, so I'm trying to get in the zone here. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, yeah. Martin, as always, another great piece. It's nice to see like a small vignette type coming from Martin. Yeah. Awesome base. Good scene. I love the groundwork at the very bottom there by the minefield. I think that's my favorite part of this, is how he did the groundwork. Oh, yeah. And like the dust being kicked up and stuff like that. That's, that's really cool how he's managed to do that. Mm-hmm. And then also, I just uh, yeah. I just felt bad for the gunner in the back because he's about to fly out. <laughs> he's, he's about oh, yeah. to eat, he's about to literally eat that fifty cal. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Eat this, Jerry," and then he's about to eat that shit. <laughs> oh, the driver's about to take the MP40 in the face as soon as he hits the ground. Yeah, fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but considering that this is like the um, the Tamiya SAS Jeep, which was from the seventies, at least. Yeah, it's all you know. shit. I mean, it's a good, it's a really, really good kit. The only thing I'd say is the fifty cal on it. You would want to change out just because it's yeah, not that good. But otherwise, like seriously, good kit. It's really fun. Yeah. He did a good job with it too. Like yeah. all, especially all the extra stuff he added, like the value gear and whatnot. Yeah, that was good stuff. Yeah, so cool, so cool. All right, then we got Don's Valentine. Uh, beautiful piece of armor here. Uh, I love the way he did the camouflage and the weathering. It's so subtle, but it like it just works so good. Oh, yeah, but, the uh, camo is great on this. Oh, yeah, it looks so fucking, like, that's some shit, like, mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes me want to build a Valentine. <sighs> I've actually got a Valentine coming on its way at the moment. I bought one on Trade Me. Can't wait. Although it's an early one with the two pounder, which kind of my favorite one. Oh, there you go. But uh, so he made the this is the Bronco kit, and he had a lot of trouble with the tracks and the suspension. It's supposed <laughs> to be work it, workable suspension. It ain't. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's always fun to watch De uh, Don have a little bit of a crisis with a kit. It's just. Good that's the like, sidelines. That's like part of Don's modeling experience is like there's a crisis with every kit and it's just amazing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. But this is a really good model, really good paint job. Just good everything. I love it. Agreed. Good shit, Don. All right. Next we have Nick, the scale armor. He's got the second battle of LMA, 1st of October 1942 to 1st of November 1942. IBG model Chevrolet C60S petrol tank 
Dragon Models, LLMA Sherman, Mark II with Mini Art uh, Continental Radial Engine. And uh, always nice to see Nick's work. It's really cool seeing he made this diorama. Uh, love the scene. It kind of flows real well, in my opinion. The tree and he did the natural lighting too, which just makes it look even even cooler. Oh yeah, uh, makes the makes shadows look... really good. Mm. Oh yeah, you know, all the little details he added. Like you know, it's it's something cool too. Like a lot of people don't do like refueling stations or whatever, like maintenance work. But mm. this guy, you know, Nick, he did a great job at showcasing that, especially out in the middle of the bumfuck desert. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and the fact he was brave enough to build the uh, Dragon Models Sherman Mark II and then cut it in half. That's uh, commendable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Agreed. I wonder what he's going to do with the second half. I think... <laughs> I'm not sure. He's got some ideas. I mean, it's all built up. I suggested making a bookend out of it. Oh, that would be dope as shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do like the fact that... who Who hates this little guy with the uh, V for victory again? Uh, I do. <laughs> the fact that you... said that'd be a Clint. <laughs> yeah. The fact you want to punch it because it's so lifelike and you hate it just ma just like makes it even better, I think. Yeah, well, it's just the smirk the guy's got on his face. It's like, <laughs> it's like he he's captured that, you know, smug British punchable face perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. And I will I will say his uh, C60 just looks incredible as well. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like he didn't like especially with like the um the windshield the windscreen I just love the effect he's done with the dust and all that. It's so cool. Yep. Very nice. Very nice work, Nick. All right. Uh, help me out here, guys. How the fuck do you say this dude's name again? Mikal. Mikal. Thank Mikhail. you. Mikal. <laughs> I'm so bad at fucking names. Mikal's Winter 35th Calm Before the Storm Italian tank crew taking a break by a bunker with an officer paying them a visit. Tamiya Kit's one bashed figure and the rest are Glowell miniatures. I've never, heard, never heard of them, but I think either. he said they was local to where he's at. Yeah, oh, Poland. Yeah. I think you might have to look into them though, because they look pretty damn good. They do, but uh, I love this scene mainly because it's a compact diorama. The layout works so well. the The figures and vehicles look great, and you never hardly ever see Italian subject covered, especially in the North Africa campaign. I think that's yeah. really cool. He did that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. That, that tank he's done, the M... Oh, fuck. What is it? I want to say M13-40. Yeah. Whatever it is, he did a bomb-ass job, so... Yeah, it, oh, yeah. that looks really good. The pan Especially, like, the... Um, all the uh, rivet, uh, riveted panels and stuff like that. That just looks really good with the weathering he's done on that. And even the Panzer four in the background just looks incredible. Oh, yeah. And he, he didn't cut it up nearly as much as, like, Nick did, but he still cut it into the scene, which I love when people do that. Yeah. Yeah, instead of, like, trying to extend things out to fit the whole thing, you just have a little section of it, and, you know, it just kind of just... Snip, snip. Yep. And then yeah. also his, his groundwork. <laughs> <laughs> his groundwork around the bunker is just really good as well. Oh, it's immaculate. I, I freaking love it. Like, this is... I, I'm not a big North Africa fan, like you guys know, but this scene right here is fucking awesome. How they've got the, the concrete bunker with the, the sand berm and the road and the signs right there. That's mm -hmm. fucking sweet. Yeah. Gives me motor pool vibes. <laughs> you just love motor pool bloody dioramas, don't you? If they're done right, yeah. They're pretty sweet. All right. like my buddy in Korea, he yep. uh, he's on deployment right now, and he sent me a video of the the Black Panther tanks there. They went yep. to a mortar range, and I was looking at it. I was like, "Fuck, that would make a great diorama." Like they pulled the turret off and were putting it in reverse. I'll send it to you guys, but it's so fucking cool. <laughs> oh, cool, nice. All right, and the winner of the competition, the sixty dollars and all of that, is. Mikhail! Congratulations. Congratulations, Again. man. We'll, uh, we'll be in touch with you uh, once this episode is out to uh, arrange everything. Uh, and yeah, big congratulations on this one. Good job, you... buddy. Well deserved. Yeah, yeah. 
but also a big thanks to uh, Martin, Don, and Nick because this was like the hardest judging we've done so far. Yeah, we we mm-hmm. sat here for a solid like hour trying to yeah. fucking decide. It was like a lot of back and forth and back and forth and you know arguing. We had to other. we had to get really picky with specific things to make this one work. Oh yeah, <laughs> which I think is like good. To be honest, if we, if we oh, have to 100%. go down to like minute details, then that's a big compliment to everyone on just how well they did it. Oh yes, definitely. If we could afford it, which we can barely afford what we're about to do, uh, we would <laughs> give everyone a prize because you guys just did amazing work. Yeah, big big shout out, big recognition, big props to everyone, and also everyone in the recreational as well. Um, yeah, we had like seventeen submissions for the rec. Yeah, we just if you want to go see them, they're all on the uh Discord. I think I'll do a special post on Facebook t- just to show them all. So, yeah. All right. And uh so this is our 2 year anniversary and we have a little bit of an announcement to make. And uh, don't worry if you're looking by the slide, it's probably not what you think or hope depending <laughs> on uh which commenter you are. So, of course, for the listeners, we have the MMP logo with a big red cross through it. And that is because, uh, well, over two years, we've changed quite a bit. You know, um, from the original crew, uh, I'm sure they don't mind me saying, uh, you probably noticed Ezra, Jack, and uh, Val aren't around much. Uh, That is because, well, you know, we're all... There's especially them there at that age of trying to decide what to do with their lives. They're young enough and stuff like that. So um, with Val, he is joining the Bundeswehr. Is that right? Yeah, him. he's actually in the Bundeswehr right now. Oh, so he's actually like part of it now? Yeah, yeah, he's going through training. Yep. Nice. Uh, so Val is in the Bundeswehr, so he's, you know, just a little bit busy. And <laughs> Ezra, is has, has he officially joined? Or is he yeah, still? he... He, he's in, he's enlisted. So Ezra is enlisting into the U.S. Army as um he's hope he's hoping to be a tanker, isn't he? Yeah, he he signed up for a 19 kilo contract, which is our armor crewman. So nice. Are you a little bit jealous on that one? Uh, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> try to try to do an inter-service transfer and they denied me because of my knees. Yeah, I'm a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to be that sports dad who lives vicariously through his son. His son <laughs> you, hates him. You're just going to be like, you'll just see him in the neighborhoods. You'll be like, can I get a photo of this, 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 and this? Pretty <laughs> accurate. I'd be like, hey, if I drive down there during your uh, your gunnery, can I can I load around? <laughs> <laughs> can I do that? <laughs> yeah, so Ezra is joining the army as well, so he's going to be a little bit busy as well. Um, Jack, he is uh, kind of got a lot of work and university commitments, but um, he'll still be around. I think you, you know, he wants to come back. He's just, just been too busy. Yeah. Life gets that way sometimes. Yeah. So, they're, so they're, so they've kind of gone. And of course we've brought Clint on to, as a regular member now, um, mm-hmm. kicking and screaming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's what happened. You turned up once and you hung around too long. Uh, and, I know it was my own fault. Yeah, yeah. So we brought on Clint. We also have Don as what we call a friend of the podcast. So he kind of just, if he wants to turn up, you know, he ta- he can. He's always fun to be on an episode with. Yes. So it's kind of uh, the brand is a bit different now. You know, you look at the logo. It's got all the country balls. Me, you know, one Kiwi, two American two Canadian and one German and it's kind of all changing a bit and we want to try and make a brand now that is more suited to the current MMP so um, we have uh, so I'm currently in discussions with a designer at the moment so we're getting a, a logo that is you know designed professionally and we'll be, and of course, you know, with every new season, year, whatever of the podcast, you know, intros, you know, you see a certain style change within in, intros and music and all that. So that's standard. So that's going to be changing as well. But the main thing is 
the MMP logo will be changing. Uh, we will be changing it to something new uh, that represents us a bit more than uh, the old one. Uh, Very exciting. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty really exciting. Pardon? Oh, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit sad to see the old one go. I mean, it'll still be it'll still be around, but yeah, you know, I think we just we just we all decided we want something that represents us a bit more accurately as as we are now. I guess it, it just makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, the one that we have at the moment is just like it was ideal for at the start, but now it's just not fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. So. Which is okay. And yeah. not only that, but hopefully with the new logo, we can start looking into uh, getting some merch out. That was one of the reasons we've held off for so long, is we've been wanting to do this for a little while, but just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Yeah, so we figured two-year two anniversary is a good time to get into it. So hopefully, if all goes well, the next episode after this will be the full brand-new look, brand-new sound of the MMP. So. Something to look forward to. Yes. Yeah. And that brings us to the end of the recap. Of course, this is the midway point of the episode. We'll still have hobby news and whips and group build updates and all of that. So we're just going to have a quick little break and then we'll be back for all of that. So I hope everyone enjoyed that little two-year birthday bash, anniversary, whatever you want to call it. And we are back with the hobby news. And, of course, we've been away for a while and there have been a lot of big announcements lately. So we're just going to hook straight into it. So some of these might be old news to some people, but um, don't care. <laughs> First up, uh, from Meng, we have the Atreides Ornithopter in 72nd scale, part of the June series. And I uh, know you guys probably haven't seen June, but... I have, and I've been a fan of Dune for a long time. I've read a lot of the books, and this is definitely something I want to pick up at some point because I think they just look awesome as hell. They uh, Ming needs cool. to do some hell diver shit. <laughs> oh, that would be cool. But yeah, so of course they've already released the Harkonnen Ornithopter and the uh, Spice Harvester, and the the new one is the Atreides. So it's uh, there are. What I like about all the uh, ornithopters is they have a different design to each of the house. So, um, yeah, the Atreides one, big glass windows in it, very dragonfly looking, very cool. Up next from Gecko Models, this goofy little number is the US M76 <laughs> Amphibious Cargo Carrier Otter Early Production. Uh, this comes with a very cool decal set, uh, having a weird as face on the front of it. Uh, comes with photo etch parts and uh, yeah, looks goofy as hell, but I love it. It's so cool. Uh, imagine it, you're setting up goofy. an ambush to kill the Americans, and then that little goofy ass motherfucker pops up out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, do we shoot it or do we not? Because it's kind of cute looking. Like, like it looks like it's got a bit of tism in it, and it's like, <laughs> oh, come here, little guy. <laughs> it just looks. It looks too high and too short. Like, it looks very top-heavy. Yeah. Oh, God, imagine doing a sharp turn and flirting everyone out on that thing. You probably <laughs> could. But, um... Oh, I, just, I just love it, though. Yes. I, just, I love it. I want one so bad. I love Gecko yeah, Models making all these Vietnam um, stuff. It's, mm -hmm. I like this trend. It's like I the road need... wheels in this thing. It looks like tractor tires. Honestly? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Very cool. Very unique. Very. Right. This is the this is the point where last time the recording went goodbye. Keep an eye on it. It's still going. So from Flyhawk in 72nd scale, we are getting two Panzer Kampfwagen 2 Alps L looks. This is the Panzer 2, which uh, ended up getting the interlapping road wheel uh, torsion bar suspension. And quite a bit of a serious armor upgrade as well. I think it ended up with about 60 to 80 millimeters of armor on it. True like It was like a baby tiger in a way. Yeah, it looks like a little tiger and a Panzer II had a baby. Yeah. How did it move? I, <laughs> I, I, there is actually one at Bovington I've seen up close. They are really cool. They're a really cool looking light tank. Um, so you're getting two kits. Uh, 
one that has uh, so we'll get in a bonus bonus one includes one resin figure a prototype from Rabbit Club uh, as well as what looks like resin uh, resin tracks and a metal barrel and the second one um, doesn't come with the uh, um, resin figure but it's a, it comes with it says oh god what the hell is that word yeah hang on uh, I got this Zustatze Panzer Ung. Zustatze Panzer There you go. I nailed that mm, shit. Very good. Yeah. Good. Don't know what it is. Uh, my guess is just looking between the two box arts, it's probably this grill on the front. Probably. Yeah. Like now, early standoff armor. Yeah, yeah. Real, real quick, Clint. Uh, you know how let loose you can play the looks in it. So, just saying. <laughs> but yeah. It's pity they're not in 35th scale because uh, Panzer II in 72nd is pretty damn small, but oh, yeah. otherwise, very, co- very, very cool. So I was uh-huh. hoping that Flyhawk was making a uh, armor. I thought they were just stuck to ship stuff. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, times someone, change. Yeah, branching yeah. out. Uh, this one's for Garrison. Uh, we <laughs> have from Miniart the Iraqi T55 L A L uh, Enigma. Uh, Soviet, uh, not say Soviet-made base. Don't know what that means, but this is the uh, the weird T fifty five that they found in the in Iraq. The Enigma. It's got all this weird armor and stuff like that. I need to make it. Like I didn't even realize it had this weird space backplate armor type thing. It's just weird, isn't it? It is really weird. Like I wonder how effective it actually was. Well, well, I we mean, saw how the battle went, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say it's like they all still got clapped, pretty much. So yeah, yeah. But it's it it, it does look cool though. Oh, the Enigma is a very cool looking tank with all the weird additions to it. So something I would like to have as well. And didn't these still have manual turrets in them? God, did like, it? The, I'm pretty sure they did. The gunner had to fucking crank them around. Fuck that shit. God, with all that extra armor on it. Oh, fuck, no. <laughs> no wonder they lost. arms are fucking huge. <laughs> How'd they manage to get through the tank tank hatch with those four arms? Fucking <laughs> Popeye in there. <laughs> uh, up next from Kinetic, we're getting a 48 scale F-103. F-104G uh, with Canadian decals, so it's a pity uh, Dennis isn't here, because he would probably, well, I think you guys would be in a splash zone. Um, a good thing he's in the harness still. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Ryfield Model, <gasps> a <gasps> Panther Alps G, which includes night sights, air defense armor, steel wheels, and workable tracks. <sighs> Uh, gotta say, Don't we already uh, have one of these? I gave you... I think, uh, that, I think it was just the G without the added stuff. Yeah, I got a... Uh, I, I, I gave... Know, I, I think I won in the stash already. That's uh, Yeah, Ryfield. I gave... Oh, from Ryfield? Yeah. Just... Oh. The one I gave you was from DML. Oh, uh, oh my bad. Mine's an F, not a G. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, so we got the G with, uh, I got to say, with all the add- add-ons, the G looks good. You know, with the night, oh, yeah. the night sights and the air defense armor just looks cool. So, I mean, hate to admit this, I would probably like this kit as well. <laughs> uh, oh. Right, we have two Pumas, SDKFZ 234-2, coming out at the same time. Both in 35th scale, both with... Uh, uh, interior, full interiors with engines and that is from Ryfield Models and Mini Art. They're both releasing them at the same time. And this would probably make Clint very happy. Um, uh, I don't know which one I want to get. Uh, well, Ryfield Models is really good. Mini Art's pretty soft plastic. The Ryfield Models uh, <laughs> also comes with resin parts for the um, muzzle brake. So you get either the standard muzzle brake or a covered one. Mm. Just putting it out there. Um, yeah. Sort of either or. Don't know which one you'd like, but um, I will say both box arts go hard. Oh, yes. very. Like the the I do like the camo on the uh, mini art one. That mm-hmm. looks cool. 
it's almost like they they must have like insider information about what who's releasing what. I mean, the number of times where like <laughs> Tacom releases an Apache, and then there's seven new kits from other companies. Like, come on. Just wanted to put this one in for aircraft. KP models are releasing two ME 262s. Uh, the first one is the 262A1-A in the German service. And the second one, uh, actually, they are called the Avia S92. These are post-war 262s that the Czech Republic took out, uh, well, Czechoslovakia took over after the war and started producing them and they called them the avia s92 so it comes with so instead of being in the uh splinter camo of the germans it's there uh you've got check markings for them and i think there's some slight differences to them but um yeah listen on the fact about the 262 they were used after the war for a bit uh by different countries yeah czech czech republic uh czechoslovakia took them over I mean, it only makes sense. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's German aircraft and they're used for bad shit, but, like, 262 is a good fucking aircraft. Yeah, they actually have, they have way more kills than what, and they were produced way more than what people would imagine. I think they, they I think they have, like, something like 200, two to 300 kills in total. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, there were a lot of them. Like, more than you'd expect. Okay, from Italy, we have a uh, D-Day special, a GMC oh. two and a half ton trucks, uh, six by six. Uh, comes with the uh, ring mount for it, with the 50 cal and decal sheets for three versions. And I figured this one would probably get Garrison going <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, Nor- Normandy six by six. Yep, looks pretty. And good. it has a 50 on it. That just like oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also from Italy, we have an EF-111A Raven in 72nd scale. This is basically an F-111 Aardvark, but, uh, you know, turned into an equivalent of a Growler, basically. Is it a Growler that's the um, Electronic Warfare Hornet? Uh, no, this is a Dennis question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think so. I think, I think, the, I think uh, you have the F, F-18 Hornet, and then you have the... EF-18 Growler, which is like the electronic countermeasures um, Hornet, and that's basically what the Raven is to the Aardvark, which uh, I would... The Aardvark is one of the few jets I would love to have as well. It's just such a cool aircraft. From Das Werk, in 35th scale, in cooperation with Vested, Vespid Models, we have a GFF Eagle 4 EKT uh, uh, German words, 2013. So this is a German um, troop carrier. Has a on top. It has a Crows MG3, and that looks like a missile system next to it, doesn't it? I don't know much about this vehicle. Looks cool as hell, though. It does. You have four decal options as well. Uh, Bundeswehr, ISAF, Irish UN, and UN. Actually, the Irish UN one would be looked pretty cool. I'm about to say, that would <laughs> yeah. be fucking tits. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from Hobby Boss in 48 scale, we are getting the funniest tank destroyer Is this named. Is the Max? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, the Dicker Max, which is a uh, casemate, um, large, large caliber cannon. Um, tank destroyer made on the Panzer IV chassis. Uh, this is sporting a 105 millimeter cannon. Of course, um, after this, you have the Stura Mill, which is uh, based off the VK3018 chassis with the 128 millimeter. But um, yeah, just wanted to throw it out there because it's called Dicker Max. Come on, what how many jokes? Putting this out? Pardon. <laughs> Hobby uh, what company's doing this? Hobby, Hobby Boss in 48. See how it compares to the old Dragon one. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Max, dig her down. From IBG in 72nd scale, they are releasing a lot of really oh. cool stuff. If only it was in 35th scale. We have a Focke Wolf 190 D9 or Dora 9. That is the Focke Wolf 190 with two engines um, in the nose. That was for high 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 altitude um, bomber formation 
shooting down, interceptoring type thing. Uh, the predecessor to the TA-152. We have a Panzer Belsvagen 2 A2, which looks like a Panzer 1 with a Panzer 2 turret and some extras on. I've, ne I've never seen seen that before, but... Me either. Yeah. Crowds got drunk and had work. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Uh, they are also releasing in the lineup a BTR 4E Ukrainian Ukrainian Army with slat armor, oh, yes. which uh, I will say for a modern vehicle looks incredible. It does. A Daimler Daimler armored car Mark II, which I am excited about. If only it was in 35th scale. Mm -hmm. An M1139 Italian uh, tank. That is the one where the 37 millimeters in the hull and it has a rotating turret with two machine guns. Also would love to have one in 35th scale, but unfortunately it's 72nd scale. As well as two FV4101 charioteers. Uh, one in Finnish service and one in British service. The charioteer is, the, is a Cromwell with a new turret that has the 32 pounder in it. Mm. Uh, and they, I think they look really cool and I'd love to have one and lastly from TACOM their oh, uh, no. latest announcements could it be? an SD KFZ 250 <laughs> Alfs oh. A not a 251, a 250 um, well, is there much is of a, a difference but, yeah, go for it oh, so this is a welcome surprise is there much difference between a 250 and a 251 uh, uh, 250s uh, short too much, or uh, is it short? Not not, a, not as long. Sorry. Right. Okay. So it's just it's the two five one stumpy brother. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> it's uh it's the two five one they gave to the to the crowds who needed to ride the short bus. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they've announced. Uh, so it's the Alps A. So the very first version as well. So. When did when did when did that one come out? I feel like that would probably be like a nineteen thirty eight. Oh. Or 37 maybe let's see what google says really quick i mean when was the when did the 251 first come out again let's see can you see 250 yeah type away over there 1939 is huh. when this uh, came out and it's all service from 1941 to the end of the war Huh, because I know it went through a lot of iterations, like the two five one, like the two fifty dash nine has the twenty millimeter cannon on it, and it looks really cool. So, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Tacom do with this one. Uh, full, hopefully, it's like full interior and everything. So, I don't know what Tacom it, it was, will be. Looks like it was pretty much developed uh, right along with the two five one. Huh. Were they just like two different companies? Uh, yeah, what's the purpose with the fucking yeah. short 251? Like, like, I mean, you know, does it depend on the weather? Uh, summer it's a 251 and winter it's a 250? <laughs> 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 uh, it was uh, pretty much, I guess it was developed, uh, I replaced the uh, SDKFZ10. All right. And that is all for hobby news. So we'll just dive right into what we've been working on. Splendid. I am up first with my Tamiya 1 700 USS Hornet for the Doolittle Raid. I haven't done a, a lot of work, to be honest. I've been pretty busy with other stuff. So, But lately, I've managed to mask off the bottom of the hull and start spraying the uh, disruptive pattern. So that was all. So that's just one mask, bit of masking tape. That one. Really. Very nice. Looks yeah, really I just good. got. I got the. It's the um, Tamiya forty millimeter wide tape. And then all I did was stuck it down onto the uh, mat to remove some of the stickiness as well, and then just with a sharp blade, just cut around and made one giant long stencil, basically. Uh, Callum. Yeah. Yep. Why was it sticky? Pardon. Why was it sticky? Well, I mean, Tamiya tape is pretty exciting, you see. Um, <laughs> oh, gotcha. 
Gotcha. <laughs> you need to talk to somebody about it, buddy. Let me know, okay? I'll just send you the video. Uh, that, that, <laughs> actually, yeah, do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was using to me a masking tape. Then the tower or island. That it's called an island, isn't it? Yeah. Fuck, you got me, dude. Yeah. Um. So that was masked off with um, blue tack and a toothpick. So it actually worked out really well. And the last thing which I completed last night was finishing all 16 B25s. Fully painted, decaled, everything. I know that took you a fucking minute. <laughs> it took me you got three... got a close-up of one of them? Uh... I'll I can I'll send you one and I'll add one in post production, but right. there's not there's not a lot of there's not much to them. I'll give them that. I'll give it that. <laughs> they they have four decals which are all the stars for the wings and the fuselage, and they were not good decals. Mm. They were off center. You know you got like the the clear which they sit on. Yeah. They were they were off center on that all of them. Uh, they were very thick, so they didn't want to conform well. And there was so much carrier film. My God, they like the the decal sheet. When I took the decals off, like the, it was thick, thick with carrier film. They got they were sticking to my the uh, mat. Mm. Like I've never seen that before. Like what, what? Why are there so much carrier film on them? So they they were just yeah, did not enjoy that. And I spent three hours last night doing that. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can Nick ten Nick can attest to that because I was just texting him as my brain melted. <laughs> <laughs> but Take yeah, so help. all I've got left is I've got to do the uh, the lifeboats, uh, seal it all, and then paint the flight deck because the flight deck was uh, not black or anything. It was actually a very dark uh, navy blue. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to do that because they were wooden decks with a blue varnish or blue stain on them, which I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. So once I do that, then I can pin wash it all, do that, and make a base for it. The base will probably just take me a day, to be honest. But <laughs> it's progressing along. And I'm going to have the lead one just, you know, you know there's that photo and you're watching, it drops just below the deck and then rises up. So it's yeah. going to be that moment just as it drops off. Mm. And I'll, it'll be stuck up with wire or something. Yeah. But it's going well. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. And I've just got some extra... These are just extra photos of the Tamiya uh, V1 buzz bomb that I made for the 48-hour live, uh, live stream. Which I'm um, pretty happy with the airbrushing results, i got to say. Getting a nice soft blend in. Looks really good. Yeah, it does. Um, I, I was also, a little handy mate too. Oh yeah, that that actually comes with the kit and everything. That's, oh yeah, that's everything. Comes with it. Mm -hmm. It's a very good oh, kit. It's a very good kit, and I also did uh, a little bit of pre shading as well, which you may or may not see. I don't know. Anyway, moving on. Oh, <laughs> it was only a matter of time. Uh, been a uh, uh, the files are from uh, Galactic Armory. Uh, he makes a whole bunch of stuff from Halo to s mostly Star Wars, but he's started putting out uh, some of his Helldiver stuff. So I've been 3D printing myself a B-01 tactical helmet. Democracy needs us. Exactly. Is this or one that you'll be able to wear? Democracy. Oh yeah, yeah. Does, oh, does it fit? <laughs> it fits. Yeah. You're gonna to have to like send a photo of that, eh? Yeah, I'll let you, I'll keep you guys updated as, as how I build much it. would you charge? Uh, <laughs> Garrison wants his own one now. <laughs> uh, since I bought the files off of Galactic Armory, it's like you know I can't sell the uh, the prints that I make from it only you know for personal use. How much Officially. would the 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 resin cost? Wink, wink. Oh, it's FDM. So it's uh, it's probably it's about run roll of filament, so it costs me about twenty bucks to make it. 
That's okay, not bad, so actually. I'll send yeah. you 40. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want it. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you purchase the file, you know, then you would purchase the rights to print print them. So I how much are the file? Twenty bucks. Fuck. Again, that's okay. pretty good. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, very cool. And this is uh, what I just started on last night. It's the Kawasaki Ki sixty one dash ID Hein, also known as the Tony. Um, <laughs> it looks like it, a Tony. <laughs> well, the the reason is they first uh, we first had contact with these uh, during the do do little raid, which you know kind of ties in with Callum's doing. Oh, oh yeah, um, and it's like you know we didn't know that they had a fighter with an inline engine. We actually mistook them as uh, BF 109s, but they use a Daimler Benz DB 109 engine, or sorry, 601 engine. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, it's a, uh, it actually looks like a BF 109 as well. Yeah. Um, but then, so they first first got the code name Mike, because uh, they again they thought that it was a 109. But then, you know, later contact, they realized it looks more like an Italian uh, aircraft, so they redesignated a Tony. <laughs> That's fuck. I love <laughs> that. Is so good. Names. I like the fact that the Hein is such a dramatic change from all the other Japanese aircraft. Oh yeah, like yeah. It just it's a complete design because they they only used it for home defense, didn't they? Um, no, it's it's all some other action. Did it? Oh yeah, I I believe it's all action on Grottle Canal. I think it did too. Oh, okay, I always I thought have to it was look just more into the history of it, but I, yeah, because I think one of its primary things was home defense. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah its primary def- uh, objective was. Hmm. Especially near the end of the war, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as with every, as with all the air, Japanese aircraft, <laughs> are you going to try and do the box art camo scheme? I'm going to attempt. <laughs> um, Fuck yes. Uh, I got. A, I know a vi- YouTube video I can send to you. Um, LPJ models. L- LPJ? I just uh, watched that one uh, this evening. Uh, yeah, he did. He did a really good job on that one. So that's good. Mm-hmm. That was a good video. And uh, Sully Scale Models just, uh, I think his last video was of uh, this kit. Oh, yeah. And you're also going all out with the uh, wheels and uh, gun barrels. Yeah, and also got a Quinta Studios uh, set, which this is for the Hasagawa kit, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to make it work. Yeah, yeah. And Very Dennis cool. has this kit in the stash, and I keep telling him, you know, like, hey, we need to build this together, but he has not replied to me. <laughs> Keep messaging him. Just keep going. We need to harass that boy and get him to stop working. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stop working with the harness. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, remember, comment below what you think Dennis does. <laughs> there is no wrong answer. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so this is what I've been working on. This is my What If Cold War uh, diorama. Uh, I've been doing a bit of work on the base itself, so starting from top left, going right in the bottom, I got about, I'd say a good 90, well, as of the picture, it was like 90% painted, I've got it 98% painted about now, I just gotta do the inside of the windows and another layer for the carpet, um, got the tree built with the broken branches, uh, roads done, sidewalks done. I just glued on the electrical box and light for the building. Uh, lots of fun there. Got some bottles on the bottom. Um, let's see, what was that? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I got some bottles there on the bottom. Then on the right hand side, I got my, uh, I want to call it a 251, god, STRV, goddamn, <laughs> brand fart. Uh, STRV is almost done. I have painted the branches like a, a flat earth color, and uh, all I gotta do is add snow 
and the branches and the two five or two five. God damn, the SD <laughs> RV will be done. And uh, but I'm gonna weather everything all at the same time, so that'll all come together once uh, once it's all done. But got the well, I've been working. I did. I painted uh, uh, Drix Krogs on the door, which means drinking. Uh, drinking house. I think that's what that means in Swedish. Uh, I painted the gutters like a, a dark rust color, and then I added the electrical light and uh, electrical panel on the side of the building in the alleyway. Very cool. I do like the uh, seam lines on the bottles. <laughs> yeah, most of those are going to be covered by rubble anyway, so I said, fuck it. <laughs> Sorry, I, was just, I just couldn't help myself on that one. <laughs> no, you're good. I, I really thought about taking care of them. I was like, you know what? You're not really going to see them anyways, so fuck it. <laughs> just face them towards the back. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, and then next up here, you've got the three figures that I built for the Cold War diorama. These are supposed to be Russian conscripts uh, holding the town. Two anti-tank men with the fire team leader. These were really fun to do. Made a custom camouflage. Uh, and after they sat for a few days with the oil wash, they look a lot better than when I recorded my YouTube video. Uh, I should stop recording my YouTube videos the moment I do the fucking wash. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they, they look pretty good. I'm very happy with them. Uh, Pretty excited to get them on the diorama. I'm, I'm getting close with this thing, guys. I, I ordered the yeah. uh, the fucking nameplates. Should be here this week. So nice. Um, all I got to do now is, well, yeah. Actually, all I got to do now is put down the rubble, let that dry, and then I can paint the rubble, and then add snow, and that. Oh, and then another layer of mud in the trench in the back, and a layer, paint the interior windows, and another layer on the carpet, and that really should be it. Oh, and a, and a wash on the tree. But that's it. That's all I got left. Very cool. I like, I like that guy's mustache. Oh, Thank yeah. You. That's my favorite. Looks just like John Cleese. I was just <laughs> thinking that. I was like, that's John. It looks like John Cleese in that middle photo. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I've been telling him that since he started painting them. It looks like John yep. Cleese. <laughs> oh, John Cleese in an alternative low. Um, <laughs> what was it? Um, bad. Faulty Towers goes to war. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Uh, there, there's a Monty Python joke in there somewhere. Just <laughs> oh yeah, somewhere soon to be exposed. <laughs> All right. Uh, so moving into the group builds. Currently, we have the Pacific Theater group build going on from the first of March to September first. Uh, if you'd like to find out more information about it, join the Discord. We have an entire category with channel set for it. All the rules, the prize is the same as this last group builds. Sixty dollars worth of models up to of your choice, one winner only, and we've already got quite a few people wanting to submit for a competition. So go ahead and join. Uh, and even if you just want to submit something for recreation, that's completely fine. Come join the fun and uh, show us what you can do. Next, we got a science fiction group build from the same time frame. This one's just for fun, shits and gigs. Uh, if I can get some Hell Divers two shit, I'll be uh, doing that. Uh, I, I wasn't going to do this one, but I said, fuck it. I really want to do some Helldivers 2 stuff. So, uh, yeah, same shit. And then uh, the ongoing for the foreseeable future, the Horizon on the Fence Force group build. Uh, I I have an updated one with a different timeline. Uh, i got to get that sent to you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is just ongoing for the foreseeable future. It's the Discord's official group build that We'll never stop because HIDF is kind of our thing. Uh, build whatever the fuck you want, however the fuck you want. It's literally like off-brand Fiji with Warsaw Pact and, and NATO equipment that's just fucking thrown together. Uh, <laughs> so come have some fun. It's a really good palate cleanser. Like the HIDF is a really good palate cleanser for uh, if you do like a lot of historical stuff or whatever. You just need a break from what you normally build. Really good palate cleanser. 
Or if you just got a kit that is just shitty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. it. Yeah. And uh, once you finish listening to us, go check out all the other podcasts out there. You will find them on scalepodcast.com. Uh, you'll find all sorts like model insanity podcasts, small subjects, model geeks on the bench, uh, all of them. I won't go through them all this week because my voice hurts. And of course, a big shout out to our Patreons, you bunch of weirdos. Paul Gallagher, <laughs> Lord Floki, or Clint, although he's part of the podcast, he pays to be here for some reason. Uh, Robert Judson and Robert Brisbane. You guys are awesome. And Agreed. before... Before we close out, I'm going to send you guys a photo of something really cool that I might add in post-production if I remember it. Uh, this okay. is the one-to-one -one set from the movie uh, Yamato 2005. This is oh, the one, shit. This is the one-to-one -one set they made of the Yamato's deck. Oh, sweet. That, that you could walk around. Cool. That is really cool. I would love to like walk around that. Uh, yeah. yeah. One to one scale diorama be awesome. Oh Jesus! But on that note, that has been two years of the Micro Machines podcast so far. That was our two year anniversary. So I would like to thank everyone from the bottom of our hearts for listening to us for two years. If you have, um, if you've been brave enough to. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Next time we're up, you'll be seeing a brand new MMP, brand new design, brand new music, brand new everything. So until then, you have been listening to the Micro Machines podcast. We would like to thank you if you are still listening and watching at this point. We will see you next time. From the you. MMP crew to you, cheers and see you later. Deuces, fuckers. Appreciate you guys. <laughs>